Okay, Stefan, over to you. Yeah, so I pasted the link to the name Go. There's a path Go next to it. Um, not sure if it be yeah. yeah, somebody should. Yeah, say. yeah, just go ahead. Um, the All Safari, right. it's tricky to do that. So, give me a second. So name is basically the low level at city key. So the segment in our key. Can you read, read this? Okay. Uh, you want to I can read it. And the path is basically something on top which does not really exist. In okay. All right. So name is a logical cluster name. It's generally going to be random, except for a few specially reserved ones, right? Okay. But well, this is going to be unique. So yeah. The low level name uh, Stefan is having issues. I see. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Because we were relying before on the whole path, which was the only thing that was unique. So the whole path uh, was a unique key. So now with a cluster, okay, we can use that. Yes. Okay, that's great. Yeah. I should, yeah, have, I, that's... I, I should have replaced that everywhere. But of course, I, I didn't run the one, the test which used the real sim car, just a simulation. So there might be something missing. Yeah, I, I see the sinker is so KCP is generating a sync target key that starts with a three, and oh. the sinker expects uh, something that starts with a four. So I guess some some of them at some point is using a different okay. way to generate the hash. So okay, I will have a look yeah. and try yeah. to find. And it, I told you this this locator thing is changed. So the yeah. struct now has cluster and not workspace. Okay, so uh, but independently of of uh, the Synca and TMC, so we have name and path and. The most important rule, which is different, is indexers and informers and generalists, they use always a name. There's nothing about path by default. So every time you um, you want to use a synker, you must use names as index um, in the index to get an object. Um, client support both. Why? Technically, they support, uh, they support the path, but you can transform a name to a path just with a path. Okay. And th there are some cases, some exceptions, and uh, TMC is also uh, affected or uses that. So we have one indexer which uses an annotation which is optional. It's called KCP dev path. It's not on all objects, it's just on those which need um, to reference by path. And we have, a, we have an indexer for that in our indexer package called logical cluster path and name. So if you need to look for objects in the indexer, in the lister, or in the indexer correctly, because the list, of course, um, doesn't give you that. Um, but there's one index in those objects which need it, where you can look up by path. And this includes API exports today. It includes uh, cluster workspace types, which are called workspace types now, it's also cluster. And it includes uh, location, if I'm not wrong. Maybe I can start sharing. So I'm not sure how stable this is. Let's see. Okay, can you see? Is it yeah. too small or should I? Um, it works for me, but I have you on a big screen. So, okay, Jordan, can, how are you doing with the font? Kind Do of like that. Yeah, no better. Yeah. Like um, that. Is it better? 
yeah, yeah that's fine. Okay. So if we go here into the index says this one which is used in a couple of places. So this takes this annotation, again, it's opt-in. And you can look by pass and name. And there's a um, similar thing just by pass if you don't want the name. And this is created, or the annotation is created and added to, to objects via the path annotation admission. And there's a list in the beginning for the objects which have that. So you'll get it on API exports, locations, and workspace types? Yes. Okay. And But you can, um, every everybody who creates objects can add the annotation, and it's automatically filled in. Like, add the key, empty value, and the value is set. Oh, OK. That's great. And um, I mean, you, you will notice like exports um, are needed because bindings can reference by path. Locations are needed because placements have a reference to locations. Well, actually, they have a, um, a reference to the location workspace. And then we use lo the logical cluster path index to get some locations. That's why we have it here. And I would workspace add, types. Add those comments Good. to these lines, like what you just said. Yeah, 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 yeah. we can do it. Yes. And workspace type, um, everything for workspace type is by path. So like in in the workspace, it's by path. In the cluster workspace types themselves, it's also by path. And with those three, we get through end to end. So um, our APIs are not using paths so much. So we're good. Anyway, so this is automatic. So just add the, um, the annotation, the annotation KCP dev path and get what you want. Um, Here comes someone wants to join. Yes. In. Yes. <laughs> At least I tried to admit him. Is it? You can keep going. Yeah, so that's important. Um, hi, Steve. Um, what else is important? So, Andy, if you have questions, um, you look through the PR. Um, just yeah, I did. Keywords. I did the reviews on Friday and left. Like, if there was a file where I was like, I don't know what this is doing. I decided to come back to it this week. <laughs> OK, OK. Um, yeah, we have the big separation of APIs. So we have the core API group. And in that, I put the shard. So the former cluster workspace shard has been moved into core. And the second one, obviously, is logical cluster. And this is the biggest change of the whole branch. Basically, it changes the data structure of our data model. So um, in every logic cluster, which I mean, in the sense of a um, NCD partition, which forms a cluster, we have a logic cluster with a capital L, capital C object. So this object is created, it's visible to at least to developers, like controller authors where will know this object because it shows up in virtual workspaces, for example. Um, the normal user will not use that. Like they will use uh, the old workspace object. Um, so CLI plugin, for example, uses it, the workspace object as before. But every time you create a workspace, we have the Workspace controller, which is in the reconciler. But yeah, tendency workspace in the scheduler here. Every time you create a workspace, this code will choose a shard and create, I mean, it creates a name, which is just random here, a random 16 character base 36 object 
uh, name, not object. And the conflict is pretty low that um, you get the same name again. And it will create blindly a logical cluster objects on that chart with that name. Not with this name, under that logical cluster. The name is always cluster. When this object exists, and you also create a cluster role binding to your user, authorization will admit your um, requests. So if you go into the authorization, we have the workspace content authorizer. We had it before, but what changed is that it will look up um, the logical cluster here. And then it does an airbag uh, authorizer check that the user has access, verb access to the slash uh, non resource. Uh, and if this is the case, the request is permitted. I mean, not permitted, but um, that's the initial check. Of course, there are more checks like the normal uh, airbag uh, delegate authorizer, which is called here. No, not here. Is it called here, probably? So going back to uh, the reconciler with it. So again, this one is the most important reconciler. Um, here's a function which creates a logical cluster object. The name is constant, as I said, it's cluster. There is a concept of an owner. So we don't, I mean, owner references in Cube exist, of course, but they are not cross workspace. This one is cross workspace, or at least not cross workspace. Um, more concretely, it's cross cluster. So yeah, this one thought. references the workspace object. I had a thought when I saw that, like, why aren't we using owner reference? And then I knew, okay, well, we don't have cluster in the owner ref. And I was wondering if it made sense to try and like put use the owner reference, but put the cluster owner in an annotation, but this seems fine. Yeah, it's, I'm not sure I, I, we want that, to be honest. Yeah, I don't think but so. But anyway, there, that's, that's, is, there is no ambiguity with this approach. That's about API taste, and uh, yeah. So anyway, so this one points to workspace, and um, basically it tells the logical cluster reconciler, which also exists, and the workspace deletion and everything, that this logical cluster is owned by that workspace object. So the lifecycle is connected. And there are bidirectional finalizers to make sure the lifecycle matches. But very important, those objects like the workspace and the logical cluster can be on different charts or different regions or whatever. That's why it's a little tricky um, to like, um, yeah, maybe I, I show you that. If you, if you go here to the reconciler, um, you will find uh, oh. there's a special client, a client which is not a lookback client, but it's yeah, this one here. It's a logical cluster admin client, and this client um, uses a user which is um, Restricted, it's not system master, so it's a restricted user which can create logical clusters and authorization will skip the check I showed before. Like you can create a logical cluster object without the logical cluster object existing, right? So you need at least one client which can do that. And this is a client. And this will um, it will read the, I mean, in the code here, it will read the URL from the shard object, the shard which is chosen, and connects the, um, directly to that chart and creates the object. Let's default something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure that there's much sense in merging some. Anyway, so let's go back to our uh, logical cluster object here. What else do we have? Mm. Let me check what this is. Oh, this is our old um, user owner. 
So the user would just use by initialization. What else do we have? We annotate the, uh, the type here. Um, and we put the path, which we have uh, seen before. So basically, this path annotation is maintained by copying it from the logical cluster object down to the sub logic cluster object. So every of those uh, objects, including the API exports, I mean, the, the logic cluster object has basically the, the source of truth for the path. And when an API export or a, a location or also third one um, works with type, when those are created, the admission takes the value from here, from the logical, from the logical cluster path annotation. So this is a uh, the source of truth. And when we create a subword space, we have to copy that down. Of course, changed in a way that um, we append the workspace name. I have a question about, um, we talked about how KCP core in the future would just have logical clusters and not paths and that's yes. the so the the compromise which worked best is basically the path is a concept which is known to core because also the logical cluster um, package like the repository we have knows about paths mm -hmm. what this is is a higher level um, implementation so in a in a core project which doesn't use tenancy like all our workspace stuff, um, there is a pass as a type, but it's always just um, just a cluster name. Okay. So it's a flat hierarchy if you want. Yeah, There's something so like hierarchy, a pass hierarchy, but do you anticipate that there would be like a different repos like one for core and one for path-based tenancy or not really like I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm i'm a fan of mono repos and i think we should keep that that's my opinion but maybe a discussion we will have at some point okay. but i would yeah. like to have it split at least package wise or something we can talk about that yeah um yeah, that's a logical cluster object. Let me see. So deletion of workspaces. Um, I hope I find the right places here, here probably. So when you create, uh, sorry, when you delete a workspace, not a logical cluster, but a user-facing workspace object, this code will run. So what it does, it will also create uh, delete the logical cluster object. Like when the deletion timestamp is uh, set on the workspace, this is uh, propagated down. And it again, I think, uses this logical cluster admin client. Let's see. This is probably, and if it's not, we have to make it into that. I'm not sure it is. Maybe not yet, but it has to. So basically, um, then a client call is done and the deletion is copied down. Again, by directional, there are finalizers. So if you go into the cluster workspace, um, deletion code, not cluster workspace, logic cluster deletion code is called now. It's here. This has a finalizing method. Like when everything is deleted, we go into that, and this should be called finalized logical cluster, not workspace, actually. It will check, is there still the deletion finalizer? And if yes, then the logical cluster object is deleted, and the cluster hole bindings and holes are deleted. And at the very end, before, actually before the logical cluster is deleted, we um, delete the owner, or we remove the finalizer from the owner, obviously. So if there's an owner of the logical cluster, like this um, cross um, 
workspace or cross cluster reference we, we looked at before. The finalizer is deleted from that. Again, this can be cross chart, cross region. So again, there is a client call here, and this must be the logical cluster. What's this one? Was it? Where is that? Maybe it's the other way around. I don't remember what, what I implemented at the end. Could be that the workspace, I think it checks um, the, the logic cluster once in a while. There's a logic which does that. And maybe that's what we have seen before, actually. I'm not sure. I have to look it up again, what the logic is now. Anyway, those two are connected, like there are those two players on two different shards potentially. Um, and you've got a question. Yes, go ahead. Might have missed this at the beginning, but do we have the uh, symlink workspace objects? No, we don't, but we could have some. Okay. It's not implemented. If we have them, we would likely either we wouldn't put the owner, or we would have another kind of ownership which is not, which is not linking the lifecycle. We can think about that, but it's implement. I mean, it's, it's feasible to implement. That's not done. So all the the controllers um, like garbage collection and quota, which used to watch workspaces, of course, they now watch the uh, logical cluster. And the change is pretty was pretty mechanical. So that's not much different than before, both in garbage collection and quota. What else? Um, yeah, the workloads. Jochen, for you, workloads are mostly unchanged. Mostly, there is one thing which I want to point out again in code. If I find the right place, I think it's a placement. Is it here? Yeah, I think so. Um, here and get location. I hope this is an example. So again, we have name and path, right? Here in this case, I chose new path because selected location is a path. So I need to get location function. This shouldn't be a client, right? We never want client access and controllers. So it must be based on some indexer or at least on some informer. And this function, and you see it here, if you look in into those getters and uh, in general those abstractions for the client calls or informer calls, most of them use cluster name. Some of them use path. And here's actually, this must be path, of course. And so I default to name, but very few, and this is connected, of course, to the annotation, this KCP dev path annotation, they need path. Get location is such uh, such case, and let me see. Yeah, and this code you see in a couple of places. So yeah, again, I think we need I a helper for this. Yeah, I guess there are ten places or so where the same code is. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe there was. Did I see a helper which uses generics? Yeah, but it's not a getter, it's a list, but we can easily add a get. Okay, okay, okay. So just go ahead. Um, that's super fine. Um, and every time. What's the yeah, type okay. on the API there in the location? The type? I was where? surprised that. Uh, which I was which surprised line? to see a, a new path. I guess, uh, I don't know, <laughs> wherever you were before. Oh, here, um, you mean. Uh, this one. Yes. How am I oh, yeah. Um, so we haven't yet 
change those pass fields to use logical cluster pass. Okay. Reason is that we have a private be... we have a Sorry, private field we have a private field called value and uh, um, for reasons we want it for reasons different discussion and if you replace it here with logical cluster path um, then what was it deep equal or something breaks yeah and we actually like if we port the um, there was a change that went into go I don't know sometime in the past couple of years that uh, would fix that issue for us without having to yeah. make any changes so we could update the forked copy of deep, deep equal in Kubernetes and not have any problems. Yeah. So I would like to see the real pass type here and the same for names, for cluster is names. That, is this tracked somewhere? Um, in Gosh heads, I guess. We have PRs for that, which are open, but not finished. So it's okay. not super critical. It's just cosmetics. It's nice to have. If you can do that, maybe you should. Stringly type things that you spend three months fixing because people use the wrong yeah, strings. Yeah. Uh, maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have and we have this uh, pattern here like 15 times. Of course, we can have at least a type which is an alias of string and then get rid of that. That's work to be done. So uh, PRs welcome. Um, yeah. What else is interesting? Yeah, I mean, authorization, obviously, there is more to that. So I already went to the content authorizer, which checks the logical cluster existence. Um, the top level authorizer is gone. It's replaced by something called the required groups authorizer. I think, Andy, we talked about that yeah. in Detroit. And um, so you can put uh, an annotation. I'm not wrong. This one here on a logical cluster object, and whenever you create a sub workspace, a sub logical cluster, this one is copied over. So that's how we maintain this information: which groups are required to access this hierarchy. There's nothing about propagation. So if you change the root logical cluster. Um, this is not copied over, like there's no update, but you could do that if you want to. Um, something which I mentioned implicitly, but didn't call out. The root workspace. The only thing which is special about it is that its name is equal, so the cluster name of root is equal to the, to the workspace path, like both root. But that's basically the only thing which is special about that. Otherwise, and the root workspace is like anything else. And the bootstrap that, like, you don't use yeah, the, the yeah, yeah. to yes. bootstrap the logical yes. cluster. But basically, we can have arbitrary many, um, yeah, uh, basically roots in a forest. <laughs> so um, many hierarchies, many trees in a forest. Do you think it would be so, like, if you, if you wanted to create another root equivalent, all you have to do is just create a workspace that doesn't have a parent, right? Yeah. So if we, and this is, I think, Andy, your favorite home workspaces. Everybody who remembers that code, um, it's mostly gone. So the handler here, after checking, it's really a, a request, which is against root. It looks up, so it, it derives the home cluster name from the username via some hashing. So it's deterministic. And then it looks up the, the logical cluster under that name. If it doesn't exist, not found, we create a new one. And this is basically Andy, what you're saying. So we create a new logical cluster, which doesn't have much stuff other than um, it has a type, and um, what else? At the moment, there's no path, no KCP dev path. 
in, in private chat, uh, I sent Andy uh, an, an idea for a task for, for Wims and, uh, and him, like, maybe we want user colon username as a canonical pass for user workspaces. We could probably do that by just adding the annotation here and a few other things, but basically it's not much more than that. But at the moment it's just called, uh, this is random 16 character base 36 value. The logical cluster type being root colon home, what does that mean? Is that a workspace type? Um, yeah, and this is, yeah. So root home is a workspace type. Um, let me find that. So the workspace type concept is part of tenancy. It won't be part of core. And if you if we go into the logical cluster type here and we look into spec, the, the logical cluster type, which is in core, has initializers. Okay. So I cut this concept in half, basically. The initializers are part of core. The cluster workspace types are not. So the phases, um, what is it? See it. Oh, it's in settings here. The phase um, is also part of logical cluster. So the phase is scheduling, initializing, ready. And initializers must be empty until it goes from initializing to ready. So all this, this logic is part of core, but um, the actual controller which does initialization and um, which does the virtual workspace, which makes this thing visible to, to users or to, to developers. That's part of uh, ten of the tenancy extension. What's annotation driven? Mm, not sure what do you mean. There was okay. an annotation. Do you mean that? Yeah. Why? What does it do? Let's see where it's used. This one, I think it's used in the virtual workspace. It was pre-existing, so I have to, to learn oh, it is... now. What I just renamed it. Um, is there a reason that it's an annotation and not a spec field? Yeah, it cannot because this is, I mean, it, it was an annotation before. It's the first reason. Um, the second reason, it's in tenancy. It's a tenancy concept. Oh, got it. Okay. Right. So well, everything we want it, to... What is it doing and why don't we delete it? It seems like it's in the wrong place. No, no. Home workspace is not a core concept. That's a tenancy concept. It's a logical cluster. I guess I was concept. expecting to... Uh, I was expecting to expose tenancy intent through objects and not annotations. Is, is there a workspace that corresponds to a home? No, there's project? not. There's not. One second. So, oh yeah, here, here it's used. The workspace type exists, which is also a misnamer, I guess. Yes. Well, that used to just be like it originally. It only checked to make sure that the cluster workspace type existed, but then it expanded. Oh, yeah into just being, it is a admission for cluster workspaces. Here, here's the reason why we need this annotation. I forgot about that. So this is admission for a workspace, right? Yes. And when you want to admit a workspace, you need to know the parent type. If this workspace is created in a, in a home workspace, or in a root workspace, there is no type because there is no workspace, right? There's no parent anymore. But we still need to know the type. That's why we put it not on the parent, but we copy the type basically from parents onto the logical cluster as an annotation. Or in the case of the home workspace, 
we do it in the home workspace uh, server handler. Does this make sense? So no. this way we can, we, we know the the current type of the parent we know without looking into the into one layer up. So we know it locally. That's why we have it. I would say Example. that this is a way to eliminate the need to have a workspace that represents a home workspace. Yes and no. I mean, in the in the old code, we had this bucket hierarchy. Yeah, and we could look into the bucket workspace above. Yeah, look on the workspace object for our home, find the type. This doesn't exist anymore. And what you say, Andy? Um, yeah. Now there's nothing above us, so we have to look somewhere locally. That's it. So there's. Seems like I could create a default workspace type object or something and put it in there. It just seems weird to drive through annotations on a core object that isn't part of tendency. Right? Because like that admission chain is now admitting tendency workspaces, but has to have full read access to core logical clusters to do it. Yeah. I mean, Default of course, you can have policy reference. <laughs> you could have another object, but for one value, maybe that's overkill. Logically, yeah, maybe. But here, it doesn't make sense to have another object. Does the permission model make sense? Like, if someone's deploying tenancy on top of KCP in a particular uh, root from the forest, will they have mm -hmm. the permissions required to do the logical cluster stuff? Mm, it's privileged in that sense at the moment. If you want to change that, you have to add admission and do some or add some admission or some permission model which allows that. Well, I mean, the reconcilers will do it, right? Like, what? Yeah, today, yes. I mean, if it's if it's not in I mean, if it's privileged the ten or the whole tenancy code, it's not a problem. But if you have non-privileged code, like maybe TMC is non-privileged at some point, if they need something like that, they couldn't do it. What I guess what are the other uh, places where the tenancy code has to be privileged? Uh, I don't know. Okay. If you want to explore that, do it. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I, I mean, I would say this is leaps and bounds better than the current model. And if there's some bumps along the way, that's fine. We'll smooth them out. Um, yeah. yeah, that's that's fine. I think it seems like potentially making it self-contained. If we do want to split it out, it's probably just advantageous to us in the future. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, we just have to do that. Like you, you notice when you split this this kind of code, um, it's like a big spaghetti where everything is connected to everything. <laughs> and you, it's, at some point, you notice when something just doesn't work. Like um, the past concept, we tried to keep it out of core, but it didn't work out. So now we have the past concept, the abstract one in core, but um, the implementation outside. These kind of compromises we have to do. And here, I'm not, I don't know. Sure. Place for exploration. Um, what else is interesting? Anyway, so any you see, this code is so much simpler. Oh yeah. Than before, so there's no hierarchy. There's nothing like, um, what's the English word? You know what this game was where you have three, four balls and you throw them. Like the old code was like that kind of. Doing request handling, and this is mostly done, uh, gone so yeah. much simpler. Um, let me see.
Yeah, so I, I created a reconciler core here. I'm not sure we are complete yet. Garbage collection should maybe also move there and some others. So this is a place where we can start to split core and non-core stuff. Oh yeah, projection. Um, that's maybe interesting. Um, oh yeah, I wanted to ask about that. So workspace is a primary, a normal, a normal resource. There's nothing about projection of workspaces anymore. What I left um, for the moment, so basically took virtual, which was cluster workspaces in the past, I think, or was it workspaces? I'm not even sure. Maybe it was workspaces. It was but basically, I, I, I inverted that. Like cluster workspaces are now projections of workspaces. The only reason is that our end-to-end -end tests make use of it. And I didn't want to touch that. So in the okay, moment so we, we pour all of them, get rid of the production. Okay, so we can quickly follow up and just get rid of this. Yeah, yeah. There's no reason anymore. That's also why I, I renamed cluster workspace type to workspace type. Yeah. Let's forget about cluster workspace as a concept. Yeah. Oh yeah, maybe something about virtual workspaces in general. Um, you know, they have this. Um, so formerly they had a what's the name, API domain key or something, mm -hmm. like this part of the URL. Um, this is never a pass. It's always the cluster name. And maybe, yeah, this is also interesting. So Joachim found out today that the CLI was broken. And just want to briefly explain. So basically, this case was broken. And so the, uh, yeah. the, the URL, which is in the workspace object, like in the status, there's a URL. Everybody knows that. Um, this was used by um, the CLI, just copied into the group config, basically, when you change the workspace. Now, this URL is a cluster or has a cluster name. So it's cluster slash cluster name. Yeah, basically that. There's no pass anymore. The pass is basically its state of the CLI. So when you start in root, you are in root, obviously. When you create a workspace, foo, and you enter it, the foo is appended to root. And that way it's preserved. So we don't take the pass directly. And that's why um, what we're doing here, and actually I notice this is wrong. It doesn't hurt, but it's wrong. So before here was URL magic, um, and this broke. So now we just take um, the workspace name, which was just created in this case. It's a create function here of the CLI. And this is um, passed to the use command. And uh, that's why it works. And when we do dot dot, we remove one element from the pass, and yeah, that's how it works. So it's a little bit like an illusion for the user. Actually, the system has cluster names, but uh, the front end the CLI can work with the pass. But um, so the front proxy knows about path and it knows about logical cluster names. And uh, let me go to name go yeah, here. Oh, it's path go, actually. So Steve had added this comment, and Lukash took it over into his PR. So if, if you have a hierarchy like that, from here at the end, there are the cluster names, those numbers. In reality, they are a bit longer because you want to, uh, them to be unique. But in any case, um, this is a hierarchy example, and you have many valid paths, right? So for the invoice here, for this one, um, the longest path we call the canonical path of this workspace. Oops. But you can also go to just management and go from management into the sub workspace, and or well, maybe it's here. From accounting to the sub workspace, and maybe we have examples here. 
Yeah, that one. This mm -hmm. is also a valid path. So front proxy can translate that, but it's not canonical. It's not something um, um, the system understands it, but you cannot reference it, for example, because our indexers won't have it, and it's not something the user will use. If I go how, to the front proxy, how yeah. does like you said canonical was the longest path? Is that necessarily true? Like, how does the system know that root accounting US West invoices is canonical and root management US West invoices is not? Is it purely yeah, that, that's, that's that's a very good question, and maybe we will tweak the answer a little bit. Um, I don't think we have this, this today, of, right? Like, if we don't have symlinks, we don't have that second branch. Do we? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> we do. Um, so again, Andy's and Vin's task. Um, the idea is to to give user home workspaces something like an alias part. Like, there should be user colon Andy instead of some uh, base 36 string. Wait, so we two... would put that. We would put that on the KCP dev pass annotation of the home workspace, of the home logic cluster, right? And in that moment, maybe the longest pass is actually taking this pass annotation as base. So this depends a little bit, and maybe I, I now go to the. Um, Can we quickly? Mentioned. So I guess when you said that there were no aliases, I took that to mean it's a one-to-one -one relationship between workspaces and logical clusters. Is that not true? This is not true because a home workspace has no workspace. I mean, the home logic cluster has no workspace. It's generally true today, Steve, other than the home okay. workspace bit. OK, so yeah. that comment well, is future-looking. It's not, well, not one-to-n. Like it's one to one normally and one to zero oh, yeah. in that special I, I case, and there's think, no one to end. So I think we, we briefly uh, chatted about that. I don't think a Zoom link will um, influence the front proxy and with that what the valid path is. I think our Zoom link will just be something a front end will understand, like the CLI will understand. But at the end, you must reference logical clusters and workspace names. Not symlinks. Symlinks are special. That's my take on that. Not I would think the server would need to understand it, but we can talk about that next year. Yeah. yeah. As long as the as long as the user experience is fine, I don't really care. I guess uh, if it is one to one, then that comment is forward looking, and the question of yeah, yeah, longest path is kind so, of a... yeah, and the longest path gets a little bit tricky when we talk about users code on something. So like it. The path segment, which is assigned to a cluster, uh, to a logical cluster, but it's not really based on the workspace and sub workspaces. So if you give, I guess the, the main answer to Andy's question, if you have aliasing or sim linking or whatever, like you just the canonical one is the one that doesn't contain any sim links. Yeah, it's like it's if based. you, um, yeah, but what I'm talking about is something completely different. It's not about aliasing. It's about giving a parentless cl a logical cluster a canonical path, which is okay, not just a about cluster name. I see. Two different things. Yes, those are different, I think. That's why um, canonical path is, is not just the longest path which starts with a, with a logical cluster name. It's a little bit different if we do that. Anyway, so um, let me finally go to the front proxy. And maybe I start here. So I, I split up the front proxy code into the actual command and the index. And it's still very naively implemented. It's implemented by our informers against all shards. We will change that, of course, eventually. But what is important, um, this thing, it watches logical clusters, it watches workspaces and charts. 
And by that, you can reconstruct the hierarchy, right? You can imagine every uh, logic cluster is a root of some kind of a, of a tree in a forest, and then you can uh, append the workspaces, which are just name segments in the path. And by that, you can reconstruct the whole hierarchy. And this is what is done here. I won't go into the exact details, basically those few maps here. They give you the data to, to traverse the hierarchy and refine everything you need. Like we can find the longest path in the hierarchy. By that, we can get the longest uh, the connector path if we want to. And again, if we want to name the home workspace with a path, which is not the cluster name, we would have to add that here. So the font proxy has to know that there is this concept. This index is used in two places. Um, it's used in the font proxy. So if we go here to the, to the yeah, yeah, that's our font proxy implementation. It's basically the old code, just uh, I extracted the index uh, logic out of that, mostly unchanged. And here you see also the, the informers I talked about. And the second place is something I call a local proxy. This is basically the case when you run KCP start. There is no front proxy. So we have to have this, this logic in uh, the KCP instance in the shard. If you are running just one shard, the information of this index here, of the local proxy, is complete. And with that, the uh, local proxy can do everything we need. It's always um, resolving every, every path which exists in the system. So it's replacing the front proxy. If you have a multi shard setup, this will only watch the local workspaces, the local social clusters, and so on. So in a single shard uh, setup, it will be complete in a multi sharded mode. But that's fine. I mean, we have the phone proxy which does the work, so this doesn't have to be complete. All right. So much about index and phone proxy. And obviously, the phone proxy will not be in core, right? Because it knows about workspace and stuff. The, the font proxy or the index is actually what defines what a hierarchy is. Yeah. What else? Any any idea? Any keywords you still have in mind? Uh, I think this is a good intro. Um, I had made it through. I'd say somewhere between a third and a half of all the files on Friday which I'm going to have to go and retrack <laughs> in the new PR. Um, yeah, like the index code was something that I had skipped over because I it was just late and I didn't want to try and use too much brain power on Friday uh, late afternoon. But yeah, it makes sense. Uh, so I'll keep looking at it today and tomorrow. Yeah. Something I forgot. Yeah, I mean, you will notice when reviewing a number of things I had to split up. So the former cluster workspace reconciler is now part of the logic cluster reconciler, part of the workspace reconciler. And the same thing you're seeing here for the admission. Mm -hmm. Maybe you remember our phase uh, transition restrictions that have been in the cluster workspace admission before. Same thing for a few other things. Uh, here you see the initializing checks uh, about yeah, initializers are part of core, so it's of course here to to check that. Um, oh yeah, maybe one thing I didn't mention. If you look on logical cluster spec, so there's something called directly deletable. So imagine you, you create a new tree in the forest. So the prime example is an organization, a tenant. 
we won't put that under root anymore. We will have another tree in the forest for Red Hat, for Deutsche Bank, for whatever. And then the question is, how can you delete as a user um, this organization? And one idea was, OK, I can create, uh, I can delete the logical cluster object as should be. And if I do that, then the whole hierarchy goes away. And this is the idea that you can do that. Of course, there's a permission question around that, but um, this use case will come up in some way. Is this something where the command that you have to issue is to delete the logical cluster called cluster? Yeah, this at least be. initially. Yes, yes. If you want to do it that way, I mean, you can build a yeah some some other API to to trigger a delete even that would work. Um, the creation of an organization is something which is not implemented in KCP. This would be something we would do externally, basically similar to the home workspace example. That's a similar direction, but. Um, in our implementation, we would create an organization by creating the logical cluster, and we would make use of this required group authorization. So you would add some some tenant group as a prereq to enter the hierarchy. Would you see that code living in tenancy or not? I mean, it can be as an example if we want to, okay. but it's not more than an example. And basically, every every user of KCP can have their own kind of tree creation in the forest. So, crossplay and upbound, they won't have the hierarchy, but they might want to create those logical cluster objects yeah. directly themselves. And very clearly, the logical cluster objects are essential to reuse authorization. The authorization here depends on that concept. Of course, um, if you have your own authorizers, you can even get rid of the logical cluster objects if you want to. But then you get you don't get anything like um, as a whole sharding it will also partly depend on that, I guess. Maybe there will be a front proxy variant which doesn't know about workspaces, but it knows about logical clusters. Even that might be possible. So, like a core front proxy thing. This looks good. Lots of stuff to review. That's 150 commits or something. I'm just going file by file. Yeah, don't go commit by commit. I don't think this makes sense. Yeah. Thinking. Steve, do no, you have any it. other questions? No. Um, maybe Steve. Steve, Steve, yeah. Steve one, deta one detail for you. I'm not sure this changed, but I think it might. There is this cluster object in Cube, in our Cube fork. Which has cluster name and cluster wildcard. Yeah, wildcard needs to go away. No, it doesn't. I think it's it's not wrong. So the it's name field of the name field of cluster is never a wildcard. It's never a star. And it's going forward. Can you, can you encode that with the, the type? Because wildcard wild is a path. It's a path. It's not. Um, it's not a name. That's the point. And cluster name is a cluster name by type. Gotcha. That's, that's good. Why I mean, I, there was there's. I don't know if you guys did this, but in the generated client stuff, there's panics everywhere. If you try to scope a lister or scope a client to a particular cluster and you pass it to wildcard, because the previous type definitions we had allowed that. So that's a good change. We can just delete all that panic code. And I believe, uh, I'm not sure I remember completely, in, uh, in, the, in your um, API extension in former, 
the Lister implementation, we don't have a context. Was this correct? I mean, any, the context should go away to match the other listers, or we can keep it if we need it. Uh, oh, yeah, here, yeah, I think. So here you don't have a context, and I believe plus the name can be a wildcard. That's an exception. Not, not, in, not in that method, no. Or maybe in another one, but we, somewhere it was. I'm if you sure. go to the capital get. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was. Um, yeah. Yeah, the only place is like this, this method is very deterministic about when wild cards are allowed versus not. And um, there's only two methods to get for identity wildcard and get for wildcard partial metadata that allow wild cards. Ah, OK. So it's, it's not coming from the context that's coming here from. So. Yeah, that was part yeah. of Steve's refactoring. And there's actually one place where that's not, not even used. Um, OK. Maybe take a look. Uh, I don't know the context here, but this is it's it's a wrong value. The star is not allowed for a name. I see. So I'm not sure how this gets there. Yeah, we need to not break <laughs> those code paths. So, um, no. so what if I do? slash cluster slash star blah 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 what mm -hmm. what's is it just that cluster on the context will have wildcard true is that how we know yes yes and okay. the name is empty okay so we'll just need to fix that but i'm even yeah. looking so at a, line line 69 yeah so the uh, like the equivalent implementation of this method for all of the generated listers will panic if name is wildcard. Oh, yeah, yeah. This, this, is, code. Is, this is a reason actually that this is an informer, it's a lister, and the lister interface only has name. But the special lister wants also wildcard support. So that's hacky. Well, all of them should have wildcard support when you just no. list without. List, what do you mean? Not listers. Clients, yes. They do. Listers should. Yeah. Listers support. No, they do. It just changes which index you're using. Because like if you have a wildcard client back okay, in, list, then, you then it's, all objects. Then there's a type uh, breakage at the moment. I mean, it works because we don't validate everywhere. So we only validate well, certain places. I guess what I'm saying is the code between 69 and 74, mm -hmm. Like it, it's different from the code in all the generated listers. Like if yeah. you go to a generated mm -hmm. lister, it'll mm -hmm. panic if you try to do that. Mm -hmm. So the the expectation of encoding <clears throat> encoding wildcard in a cluster name, I don't think. I have to, I can't remember, but is it's not intrinsic, and I think the change to making wildcard not a name is a good one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I will just, take a look. Yeah. I'll take a look at that. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's it, I think. Oh yeah, maybe this one. So there's always another thing. Um if you look on I don't know which one which connector. So at the moment what I'm doing when you create a workspace fixture what I return is a cluster name. So it's a low level cluster name. If you want to pass, you have to take the second uh, function here. I didn't come up with a better uh, name than object. And then you can get the cluster and the pass. So if you look in the, to the workspace, uh, where is it? In status as a cluster. So here you get the cluster, cluster name from a workspace. And when you know the path which was used for creation, like that one, and you append the workspace name, you have the new path as well. I'm Wait, not super happy with this factoring. The hmm? um 
cluster field in status? What was that? Um, the workspace scheduler, the reconciler I showed earlier, that puts the cluster name into the workspace dot status. What is the so the cluster name? It's the cluster name of the logical cluster, right? So okay, got it. Is a pointer, got it. Right? Okay, that's why. To the pointer in spec is a path. What? The pointer to the logical cluster in the workspace spec is a path, which is why it's a name and a status. Yes. Okay. In the specs, there is no path. I mean, yeah, the path is an annotation and it's optional. That's not, but it's not on workspace, it's just on logic cluster. And here's nothing. There's, there are types which have a path, of course. Yeah, so Steve, the, um, if I create a workspace called foo, it is backed by a logical cluster called A736, whatever. And that's what's stored in the status. Yeah. And it's transparent to me. As an end would user? Would that ever change? No. No. That's, that's why it's it was surprising. It's Make sure SCD backup really... and restore doesn't squash that <laughs> status field. SCD backup and restore that. won't, but uh, you know, Falero backup and restore would. So, yeah, if if there's something that needs to uh, survive non etcd backup and restore, it's got to be in spec. Okay, so maybe comment that or make a PR. You. Yeah. And double check that we really follow that everywhere. I'm not sure we do. Yeah, because if we lose that value, we've lost the link yeah, to the logical cluster, right? No, yes. I was just confirming. I mean, the font proxy will know it, but um, any reconciler with local information would not. OK. Yeah, I think um, after we break, I will look at the API extensions code and make sure that we've got the wildcards working right and i can move that to spec the cluster field to spec and i'll probably do another commit that'll um collapse down all the indexer by cluster name and path usage to a helper yeah when um, are we merging this when yeah. it's ready <laughs> i don't Is think it, we, it must be perfect if we I mean, the, the things you just mentioned, they are, I mean, we have to do them. But when we merge, we still have O of weeks until we tag, right? So as long yeah, I mean, as we don't forget those things, it's fine. Honestly, if the, if the tests are solidly green, I'm fine merging any time we want to. If they're flaky, I'd rather not. But I mean, most of us are yeah. either out for the rest of the year or almost out for the rest of the year so you know if we merge it today or we wait until january 3rd or 4th i don't think it makes much of a difference yeah but basically merge early like the base in the past like those yeah. who remember that um, there's no perfect on the first try then you will i mean there are always small things you try to improve and yeah, we and we're, we're committing and... to having an unstable main for a while. Yeah. Sounds good. Thanks, Stefan. I mean, I'm not going to be able to read 20k diff. Like, it's uh, not. <laughs> don't. <laughs> uh, it's not 20k if you remove the generated code, I think. That's less. But still. <laughs> I tried in the beginning to, to separate movements and changes, but at some point when you fix up stuff afterwards, yeah. It's oh yeah, impossible. Yeah. All right. Well, I think the um, the review principle should be 
if something is really bad to merge, let's fix it. Otherwise, let's just collect a bunch of follow-ups. Yeah, in the in the PR in the description, there is a section for follow-ups. So feel free to add anything you like. Yeah. And I haven't done this KCPIO change, right? Um, intentionally because it makes the review even harder, I think. Yeah, we can do it after. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I'll get comments and stuff in as soon as I can. I won't force push on you tomorrow. So. <laughs> OK. It's all yours. Thanks. All right. Thanks. See you. Yeah. Thank you.